need to bookmark this so I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to kind of wait. I turned the air off. So oh, wow. pretty. Wow. This is really good audio quality. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the. The quality's so good in here. <laughs> you can tell because we're boiling. <laughs> Live from Studio B, part of Johnson City, this is Blair on the Air, the podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Blair, with very special guests, former student, Mary Naren. And former student, Nolan Naren. There's actually four more Narens that are former students, but our table was not long enough, so we took the middle two Narens. They're going to represent... The entirety of Blair Academy. No easy task. Welcome, Mary. Oh, Welcome, boy. Nolan. Thank you. Thank so you. good to be good here. To be here. <sighs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Blair. <laughs> okay, I got some questions for you guys. Okay. Truth does not matter at all. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. Whoo! Just to yes. get that load. Isn't that just feel better? Just the weight yeah. off of your shoulders. That's okay. Funny. So, um, what are you guys doing now? What do you? Where do you spend your time? I'll go first. Um, <laughs> Let's start um, strong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently in my master's program at the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. You can just call it CCM for short. Uh, I graduated from the university with my degree in piano performance, and now I'm doing collaborative piano, which is super fun. What is collaborative piano? I'm so glad you asked. Wow. So collaborative piano is like a subset of performance where you focus on working with others, as the name suggests. So I do a lot of playing for vocalists, instrumentalists, we do chamber music, we learn diction, we do all the IPA so that we can be good vocal coaches. Oh, Basically that's you're a cool. pianist that's like a jack of all trades. Although eventually you need to, you know, specialize in something. So Fill out this application. <laughs> you're hired. <laughs> I'm just drop that. Yeah, okay, it's awesome because it combines my love of people, my love of music. Um, your love of intense practice and pain. Yeah, I love pain. AKA, <laughs> you're the full package. <laughs> no, it's just really fun because I was a lonely piano major and my practice was inhibited by my social needs. So I would That like, is interesting. Yeah. Piano's lonely. It can be lonely. It's a very solitary I didn't solitary think about thing. that. All I think yeah. is the advantage of piano, exactly. which is... You are self-sufficient. You can play a monstrous work of art by yourself. You can. And violin sounds lonely when you play by itself exactly. often. Exactly. But see, so you have. But orchestra. it's so social. Yeah. Oh, that's you have chamber cool. Chamber music, you know, orchestra, all these things. With piano, you're most. Never thought practicing. of piano as being lonely. Well, pianists practice the most. It's just kind of the fact of music school, generally. Generally. What? Because even if you're not a collaborative piano major, you're always playing for other people. So you have a oh, lot on your that's plate. That's not practice. And you have to. Practice. <laughs> You okay. don't you have to practice. <laughs> so that's collaborative piano, and I love it. I think it's my thing. It's awesome. So, yeah, it's great. Well, I came from a stricter Suzuki school for violin, because I was doing piano with Miss Ivy, mm -hmm. his mom, um, since I was eight. So that felt like my main thing. And then I was doing Suzuki school for violin. So when I switched over to Daniel, it was actually because I wanted to focus on piano more. So I saw Daniel as... What? <laughs> I was like, I didn't, that bad. I didn't take him seriously. No, I just needed I did. that in my life. I was like, I still want to play the violin, but I don't have time to do this rigorous Suzuki schedule. And I just couldn't do both at the same intensity. So Daniel, he bless his heart, he really was so kind to me and let me practice a little less than I should have. A lot less than I should have. I'm very student led. He is. Student wants to go, we go. Student determines their own pace. He met my goals. I mean, he helped me meet my goals. And, um, Hello, and I still use violin in the ways that I learned with Daniel. Like I still use it for church, for um, weddings, for extra gigs, for teaching beginners. Meeting which friends. Which is exactly what he prepared me for while I was able to focus on piano in high school. So I joined you like mid high school as your student, I think. You're very small. I was like, yeah. I, I, you've kind of, yeah. 13, 14. Yeah. Nolan was like 10 or 11. It was at the same time. Something like that. What is it like studying violin? Did you switch from Suzuki? You yeah. didn't start with me. You switched from Suzuki. Yeah, we started with kind what of... What book did you get to? I think book three or four. So that's book three for Something sure. like that. <laughs> <laughs> You'd remember book four. You'd remember book four. It's a mountain. Definitely. Sights. Sights. I got Sights. stuck in book four. <clears throat> Not a lot. But my experience was a bunch of small private lessons with uh, the, the fiddler. Um, 
remember her name. Vicky. Yeah. We're not gonna name drop though. Oh, we and then we also took a, a couple private sessions with one of your siblings, who will not be named, who was teaching violin at the time. Abby taught you guys That's violin? That's right. <gasps> the missing piece. My sister. She and make she house said, calls. She said she was the fun one. I did not make house calls. Right. Yeah. Well, at the time, we I was very strict on like performance standards. So I can see how she could say that. Because I picked on her a lot if she was sloppy. So she just assumed I'd do that with students. Oh, yeah. But anyway, we had a bunch of private experiences. Then I got into Suzuki. And we did uh, that for a couple years. And then after, that was pretty rigorous, like you were saying, the schedule was was pretty awesome. They kept you on your toes. And then came to Blair Academy. Before was the Academy, or? Uh, it was around the time we got the uh, partnership with the Royal Conservatory. So we had the name, but we didn't have the building. So it, gotcha. it definitely felt more private teacher-esque. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, still felt but that way. I knew what was going on in my brain. And then it was coming. I think I remember when we first came, you were kind of like we talked about you sat down and talked about our goals and that was new you were like what do you want to be able to play and i was like whoa because up to that point we were just told what to play here's how much you practice here's how you knock it out and then kind of like you were talking about you let everyone play at the level they want to play at and that was really refreshing it was a lot of freedom it sparked a lot of creativity for me so i didn't i kind of like mary i didn't practice as much as i should have no definitely not a Girl, lot of theme notice. alert <laughs> Nah, a lot of fine. goofing around, <laughs> but it sparked a lot of creativity, which eventually paid off a lot of dividends in media, video editing, entertainment, things like that, which is what I'm doing now. So it definitely helped spark the freedom to have different ideas. I like the student-led part. Uh, I feel like we get burned occasionally when, in my heart of hearts, I love the violin, I love the art form, and I want you to latch onto it and just go crazy but I don't want to just take that desire and beat you over the head with it. But that's what I always hope. And then occasionally students will go, man, we love you, but we're looking for a more rigorous program. And then they'll leave. And I'm like, that's what I wanted the whole time. <laughs> Misunderstood. So that's why this year we released the new Blair Advanced program, which you guys didn't have access to. So that basically just means um, Blair Academy, we do things your way, like Burger King. Blair Advanced, we do things my way. <laughs> it's gonna yeah. be, it's gonna be killer. Time to get stuff done. Yeah, <laughs> time, to, time to get stuff done. So, um, Mary and Nolan, both awesome students. Nolan, uh oh, <laughs> is a tremendous voice actor. He turned his uh, silliness into actual, really attention-grabbing skills. And Mary has just never stopped getting better. Mom and I were talking about this the other day. It's like the, the Mary Niren philosophy. I have one of those. Yeah, because here's what I do. Let's get my hand in here. Okay. <laughs> Am I sitting out of frame, guys? Oh, I think um, that could be a possibility. Oh, when you lean back. Here, I'm good. Oh, uh, okay. There we go. You're in. So, uh, cut! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mary Niren philosophy is that like you just never got worse. Thank you. <laughs> Which is crazy. The slight edge, like that book we read. Yeah, I never saw you do like six months of a giant spike. Mm. Maybe you did emotionally, <laughs> but it's not like you jumped like three levels in a year mm. that I saw. But most kids do, mm -hmm. and I did. I went, okay, get, a, get the hang of this violin thing for the first year, and then Bang! I was like, I think I did two or three Suzuki books in a year, and then three the next year, and then it was like super quick, and then I plateaued. Mm -hmm. You just never really, you have your little plateaus, but it's like every year Mary was better. Aww. Hopefully that's still happening. Stay know. tuned for next year. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I had a buddy who always used to go, you go like, Nolan, I'm so excited for tomorrow. <laughs> you know why? Why? Because I get better looking every day. <laughs> oh. <my God. laughs> And that then at one point, I'll no, just go the other way. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. I remember texting you and I was kind of discouraged about the plateaus I was hitting with media and making TikToks. Yeah. Like, I would gain a lot. She got a monster TikTok, yeah. if they don't know this. He, he's got an awesome, monster very, TikTok. very small percentage of people have received the attention that you have. Not as much traffic going through it right now because it is very much interaction-based uh, 
platform, whereas Instagram is more like <laughs> all, <laughs> all your... <laughs> How many followers do you have? <laughs> <laughs> About half a million. Okay, good. That's awesome. About 500,000. I don't have that many. That's okay. That's sad. But I don't know if they're real. My first viral video was with Nolan. That was cool. And like my fourth was with Mary or something. That was cool. That was super cool. Videos cool. rock. So I currently have basically three part-time jobs while I'm finishing school online through Lee University. I'm doing a Bachelor of Science, AKA Liberal Studies. And that'll have an emphasis of business. And then i um, not really doing much with that. I'm just trying to graduate at this point, get the credentialism that brings, and then go full-time with Daniel Blair, actually. I work here currently as a uh, assistant video editor and media partner, I would say. Assistant director, perhaps, something like that. What is his title? <laughs> we, we need some titles here. Let's get this in writing. Yeah, he's an assistant editor and content creator. Okay. That's assistant editor and content creator. Ooh. Nolan Naren. Yes. He's editing this right now. Hi, Absolutely. Nolan. <laughs> yes. See, <laughs> look. look I'm going to drag a white screen <laughs> from my right. It's going to be your left. You ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Whoa. Where did that come from? That's gone. Oh, it's back. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool, right? He's yeah. showing off. I can just do all that. I can put like a clown emoji on Mary's face. Ready? I, oh, you look like a clown. I How cool is it. that? I deserve that. Right? Oh, okay. Lord. Need to bookmark this so I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a trick that I have. I've spent a lot of time filming myself because when you have crazy ideas and way too much time and not enough money to hire a film crew, <laughs> you end up buying a camera, setting it up, and just trying stuff. Am I right? Sure. Right. <laughs> okay. And so then you're filming for a long time and you have these audio waves that you'll see on your timeline. And so I would just do crazy stuff if I thought I did something good so that I could easily scrub to that section. So I'd just be like, <laughs> just to let... Future editing me, you know, like something important happened there. Yeah. Can we do that in this podcast? Yeah. <laughs> we, were, <laughs> we were talking the other day about uh, bookmarking something important. This like is we have super this, deep. This deep conversation, but we need to bookmark like, and that's it. Why, that's why I really feel like my mom gave me the love that I needed at the time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Ah! <laughs> Save this. <laughs> and that's oh, how, God. you know, a family sticks together. It's all, it's all about that, and you have to do that. Hmm, tell me more about that. Yes, I think that it's all about love, commitment, you need structure, you need creativity, you need the drive to keep going. That's a short. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Sometimes so, go ahead. No, 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 I was just gonna, gonna recap what okay. you guys had said and then let you, let you continue your things. Absolutely. So, you music major, yes. piano. Yes. Now you're in grad school. At a big awesome school where my hero resides. Yes, he's great. Oh, even if he's not, never tell me. Okay, I won't. Never tell. I don't even want to know that he's human. Okay. The great Kurt Sassman House. I sing that right? Sassman House. Uh, oh, it's so, <laughs> it's so great. He's really cool. If you watch a lot of pedagogy videos on YouTube or you go to seminars, he is, in my mind, just the the number one communicator of these microscopic details mm -hmm. that make violinists successful. And he's got a ridiculous track record. And he was an absolute stud as a kid. He's got all these, he's got one of like the Dorothy DeLay Awards and mm -hmm. all that stuff, just, yeah, oh. Anyway, I got to see him speak at, at Juilliard for, I, on, he wasn't even on the, the docket. They had someone drop out because mm -hmm. they were sick. And uh, I remember the guy came in, he's like, I know all of you were looking forward to hearing so-and-so do this topic and they're not gonna be able to make it. So last minute, we did get someone that we think will be a suitable substitute. And then they like put his face up on the projector and all these nerdy teachers were like, <laughs> Yeah, he's a boss. He inspires me and I'm just playing the piano in his violin lessons and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it's great. I literally brag on that. I, I name drop you like crazy. I'm name dropping him through you. Yeah, it's fine. I'll be the medium. It's fine. <laughs> it's the coolest. Does it feel cool at the time? It probably doesn't feel as... No, it feels cool because of you. You made it seem cool. Now I'm like, whoa, when I walk in. He but just, we have lots of legends there. They're all amazing. I know. But it's like the childhood hero and all of a sudden it's like... Even though you're not even doing violin with him, <laughs> it's, it's like... 
A student of mine is realizing my dream in some way. Would you like me to get his autograph next time I'm in there? No, I mean, I talk to him and stuff. Oh, okay. And he's super approachable and nice and, and all that stuff. He's like a grandpa figure there. He's so nice. Yes. Oh, I love that dude. Yeah. Okay. Nolan. Recap. So I work with you. You do a lot of media creating. I do a lot of media creation and... Assist. For your own TikTok. For Blair Creative now. He's not, helping me with... Not as much Empire! That. I need to get back to the TikTok, but... We were busy building an empire like you talked about. How so, did your TikTok get famous? What was your number one thing that people liked? Ooh, that is a hard question because- No, it isn't. It was a lot of different videos that <laughs> blew up. He asked it with the answer in mind. <laughs> I know. Mary, what would you say it is? Impressions. It's impressions. <laughs> He's an awesome impressionist. That it's is not the, the political one. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, let's cut that. That's the, the bait and the switch. Oh boy. <laughs> That's the, um, it actually, <laughs> I got Cut famous on my stances on. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, that's funny. No, um, I would make a bunch of funny videos. Impressions made it take off, but initially it was actually a homeschool com comedy video. In which I started Comedy sometimes. and impressions. Comedy, it's impressions. Yes. The wisdom didn't sell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> comedy, comedy and impressions. And, and maybe once I have some credibility, these people will listen to me, you know? Um, but that was cool. Impressions. <laughs> impressions. All right. Can you hit us with some impressions? Sure. All right. So I'm about <clears throat> to talk about a guy. <clears throat> we'll just, Mary, we'll sorry. have to guess who he's All right. Who's you have to guess who's okay. going. You ready? Okay. First one to get it wins. Oh, yay. Oh, boy. Frankly, a lot of people know about me. I'm very famous and. <laughs> That's correct. No, look, is... I drew a T <laughs> and no. then changed it to a D. <laughs> That's quite fancy. I like that one better than that because well, I belong in penmanship. <laughs> okay, fine. That's very nice. I try a Trump all the time. Sometimes Nolan will indulge me and we'll just talk together because it's not good, but it's fun. He's the only person that doesn't one word. get tired of it. I get a rasp <clears throat> and I can do one word. Hang on. <clears throat> Frankly. There it is. <laughs> That's pretty That's good. Pretty good. <laughs> it's fairly decent, I would say. <laughs> but uh, you are the only person that doesn't get tired of it. I do not get tired of it. He's That's such a cartoon really character. Yeah. yeah. I will just switch like that. And my wife is like, can I please have Nolan back? <laughs> <laughs> please. Like, I don't know who he is this. anymore. I'm like, I tried to do the dishes. Well, they got away from me. When I you try to get it. away from impressions, <laughs> when you try to calm down, you end up Ryan Reynolds. Like more often yeah. than not. It's like... Okay, what needs to be done today, honey? We can <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to cheat. Hi, right, here's you should check out my new movie. It's called Deadpool, and I'm with a very free friend that I like to make fun of a lot. Um, that's Ryan Reynolds, if you don't oh. know. But we just did that, so Double let's do another Here's another one. Another one. Uh, I think that uh, in education is important. I scribbled. Uh, this Obama. time I wrote neater. That's right. <laughs> I wrote, I was worried that If time. you can't read it, you don't get the book. That's good. I can read it. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> All right. You ready for the next one? Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going for it. We um, already know his radio. That's a better joke. Yeah. Is it like, okay, What's we have to write to who we think he's about to do. Okay. okay. Did ready? you already see mine? No. no that's going to incentivize me to be more random. That'll be oh. fun. It has to be one that you've done on TikTok that you're actually good at. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. America. She named <laughs> <laughs> Yoda. I said Thor. Thor. <laughs> I am President of the United States currently. I okay. am none of this. This is a much more fun game. I like this. All right, you ready? All right, you ready? Let's give him a topic. Oops. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, a lot this is um, angry at the price of gas. Oh, I'm running out of ideas. Okay. Angry at the price of You're gas. You're at the gas pump. You can't believe the gas is this high. Um, okay. You ready? Oops. Yeah. So I was pulling my gas. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I this looked is just at the, too easy. I looked at the price. I was like, wow. <laughs> it's not, that's not good he enough. It's this. not fantastic. <laughs> you win, you win. That's funny. This is awesome. Okay. Oh, goodness. One more. One more. Oh. Uno mas. What else does he do? I did like 32 different I am at an one. advantage here. I yeah, think, you live with him. Because we work together. Yeah, he's oh, studied. It's been me. a few years for me. You grew up with him. <laughs> yeah. I forget everything. You after raised three him. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Somewhat. <laughs> yes. Oh, I got to write. Hang oh, on. yeah, you got to um, tell me scenario. <clears throat> <clears throat> you 
want to kill the Batman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well. <got> an idea. <laughs> okay. Do you even do this one? <laughs> I don't feel like this is fair, but here we go. I'm going to pretend to be someone who wants to kill the Batman. <laughs> You see the thing about contestants lock in your answers. <laughs> Do you want to know how I got <laughs> these scars? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Oh goodness! <laughs> All right, man. Oh, boy. Okay, so what's some cool stuff that you guys have done at Player Academy? So I know the reason that we worked really hard. I know when I kind of phoned it in at times, or when I was like, "It's going to be easier to," and by phone it in, I mean like not taking time before the lesson to go, what should Mary be doing in six months and how can I get her there? You didn't do that for me every time? No, that's the big thing that mom taught me is like, I was good at lesson to lesson, just going, I'm excited to see you. I'm a one-on-one -on -one person that's, I'm happy to see you. Yeah. That's good. Uh, that's really good for a kid. For a, uh, someone studying an art form, you kind of need some more. So mom has helped me to go, what's happening in 30 days, 90 days, what mm -hmm. happens in a year? If they're with you for four years, they're with you for 10 years. Do you actually have a path or are you just going even year to year? Mm -hmm. So this is why my students are rocking it out now. They are. Because he tested out stuff on me. That is true. Oh, right. you guys like my little guinea pigs. Yeah, yeah. Like I was one of your first, I think. We're just the betas. wonder what this does. Well, I got, <laughs> I got lucky and there were a handful of people who were feeling a little bit burned out and they already were taking, their siblings were taking lessons with mom. And so they came to me and they were just already great players. All right, so what do you think we rocked out at? Mm. It was a really positive thing. And then what could you have seen more of? You're like, man, you guys did a little of this. I kind of wish you had done a lot. Or oh, you guys dang. didn't do this. Ooh. I can go first. I just remember really enjoying performing. You guys did a great job at providing a great performance environment. It was like... For your clients, here's what we've been doing with your kids. Here's what they've learned. Here's a chance for them to show it off. But it was fun. We did fun projects. We did musicals. We did popular songs. We did bluegrass. We had cool lights. We had cool music to play along to. We had cool skits that we did. It was really fun because I got to get my acting uh, itch scratched. And, <laughs> and uh, the creative thing in, in my mind was I'm just really creative. I'm not that great at music. <laughs> but music is a great way for me to express my creativity. And so that's what I use it primarily as. I didn't become a professional, but I knew enough to put my creative ideas into you know, existence. And performing was a great way to do that. So performances were just fantastic. Um, this is only because he's sitting with me and Mary. Like to most people, he was like a, a lot of my students would be so proud to play how Nolan was playing. He was well above average. He's a good kid. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I didn't know you thought that of me. <laughs> yeah, this is a good time to say good job. I appreciate that. No, I mean, it's... For the hours that you spent, you went way farther than most people would have. Yeah. I was sort of the talent without the hard work aspect, I would say. Um, that's accurate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's fair to say, I mean, if, that's, if there's one thing I could change, it would be seeing how much I could squeeze out of the, the talent I had, just adding more work. Mary's the talent and the work. Oh. Daniel is the talent and a uh, mom who <laughs> <laughs> did all the work for him. <laughs> Helpful. I think I mostly work after further reflection. You think, yeah, that's a good thing to, to talk about. Yeah. Um, except that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Anyway. Uh, what do you think we could have done better or more of? Or Honestly, I think your only limitation was just funding at that time because you were just in the beginning stages of growth. I think that all the things I could critique was just stuff you would do if you could. Hmm. But the academy was pretty small at that point. Yeah. What was that like? How big was it? So I I got a little emotional last night <laughs> talking to my wife. I got big, big, big dreams. I just want the community to have a talent hotbed and just like we treat teachers better than everyone else. I want to also pay them. I want it to be just an awesome career. No one can get a job here. And that trickles down to the students. And then we have a maximum number of students we can take, but we just knock it out of the park for them. But I was looking at our numbers and like budgeting and all this stuff. And now we have like cool pianos and a space that we own. And that's, we're growing. And a podcast. We're not CCM <laughs> yet. You're getting there. And a podcast. But mom and I's first year in business together, 
her teaching all her students, me teaching all mine, we did combined revenue of what we did in the last 30 days. Whoa. Wow. That's that awesome. Crazy? That's awesome. You gonna share any numbers? No. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So it's like 12 times the size. Of, that's awesome. And so that's like, um, they said this at our church the other day, like why do we talk about numbers? It's like, because numbers represent people. That's, that's real impact, that's awesome. Let's go. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So yeah, money does solve some things. It also creates some more problems because then you, when you don't have any money, you don't have a choice. You're just trying to give people value. Yeah. In the best way you can. Now that you have a choice, people will hold you accountable for the choices that you make. Hmm. So, do we give teachers raises or do we hire another teacher? Do we give them nicer pianos or do we do a bigger show? And it's like you have to actually make a choice there. So, hmm. the whole money thing that it it isn't real is really cool. I like how you you touched on it's not about the money. <laughs> it's not about, it's about the money. sending a message. It really is because it's not the dollar amount. It's not like, oh, you're getting all this money now. It's all the families you've helped that just generate that. All that is just a, the, yeah, a the more I just realize it's just representation. And good marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Irwin had that big thing. I know I've showed you. Oh, yeah, do it. He's like, and money? I love money. I can get <laughs> enough money. You know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to buy wilderness there. <laughs> He's like, I've been put on this planet yeah. to protect wildlife. Let's go. He had so much continuity. Yeah. And he goes, and you know what, mate? I don't give a rip whose money it is. <laughs> I'll use it and I'll buy wilderness areas with it. Yeah. And yeah, I had, I so, yeah, so that's me. It's like, I don't, I just want to do my thing. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. I think nice. a lot of people with your resources would not handle it right. They would just sort of kick back, relax. You're like, no, this is great. More money. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's all about the mission. It's all about the message. All about the mission. We're on a mission here. Mission. At Blair Academy. <clears throat> what did we What did we do well for you, Mary? Were you always yeah. ambitious or were you just kind of like a people pleaser that got put in a track for success and ended up getting skills? <laughs> well, I, I struggle with this every day. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. No, I, Miss Sidey was my first piano teacher where I was like, whoa, I really want to practice for this lady. And so I really started, I don't know if I was just being a people pleaser at the time, but it worked because I really started loving it. And then I can honestly say that Blair Academy, the best thing y'all did for me was prepare me for my future job and college career. Because everything I learned here, I used in college. I took music theory, I took music history through the Royal Conservatory. I learned all my scales and arpeggios through the Royal Conservatory. I mean, I was like set up for success and I taught with y'all. Y'all were my first job. We're leaning hard into that. So after the advanced program, there's gonna be an elite program where you have to do student teaching. You yeah. have to plan and produce your recitals for your little students. Like Amazing. we basically give you some resources and teach you how to manage them. Yeah. And do that leadership stuff. So I learned pedagogy on the job here, which is really cool. I got to shadow Daniel a lot. And then mom did like teach the teacher camps. You guys would be assigned little tiny kids. I remember those. Yeah, yeah. you had the best summer camps, the most creative ones <laughs> for like specific skills. Yeah, so I mean, I really feel prepared. I do weddings just like I did with you, and I. Minor cooler. Yeah, nothing will ever come close so to that. Those pretty great. But yeah, I just felt very confident going into college as a music major. And now going into the real world as a musician. Ooh. Yeah. The real world. What could we have done better? What did, What were you missing or what were you secretly going, gosh, I love this and I wish I could have more of it? I think uh, probably what you just started, the Blair Advance, is that what it's called? Because for me, I felt a little bit, um, not isolated, but I felt like I had to be really self-motivated because yeah. at the time it was like, oh, if you want to work hard, <laughs> and learn these things, you gotta take initiative and do yeah. it. Yeah. Whereas now you have this little community of people who are all serious about it and wanna. Yeah. So I think that was probably the main thing, but you fixed it. We have it now. That was really hard to do because I feel like our bread and butter was, we'll reach kids where they are. Yeah. And like, if you're a if you're a three out of 10, I just wanna get you to a four. Yeah. But there's a lot of kids who inside are going like, push me, like give me a chance, come believe in me, cause I'm too scared to do it myself or I'm indecisive. Mm -hmm. And so advanced and elite's gonna rock. Yeah. Elite's gonna be not even us. So the elite program is gonna be reaching out to like, you know, you'll you'll travel up to Toronto, you'll perform with the Royal Conservatory, you'll have um, 
just a big nationally recognized pedagogue helping us with your lesson plans. We'll fly them in to do like regular master classes with you. You'll do special college tours. Nice. Yeah, and all that stuff will be paid for. So that's gonna be, the but then you have to audition into it. You have to be like RCM8 already or above and. Cool. It's gonna rock. You brought up yeah. something that I could have really benefited from, but it's because <laughs> I'm not as good at self-motivation as Mary. Uh, I do, like in, in every area, I do way better w when other people around me are trying to do the same thing. Like fitness, I'm not doing that great right now. <laughs> I just I gained a little bit of weight. You don't have to get that first. No, Dude, okay. no, there was a customer. I also wait tables, and he was like, oh, see, I see married life's catching up to you. Oh, you believe that? Like, and I was like, Dude, you literally did that to me oh, in a lesson. Dear. Oh, goodness. You're, getting, you're experiencing this. It's it's a, karma you know, and God does have a sense of humor. <laughs> It brings things full circle. I do. I remember your little yeah, yeah. smirk. I was Gosh, like, it was like a year woo. after I was married, and you're like, get a little, little dad bod there. <laughs> no way. And FYI, that's rude and it hurts. <laughs> it didn't actually hurt because I did that to my big brother. Oh. I would, except I would just be like, mm. I was this skinny little mini, and I'm like, <laughs> what's up, fatty? <laughs> Susie walks woo. in the door. That's so yeah, but then he went on a crazy fitness journey and got in crazy good shape at the same time as I got married and gained weight, and he gave it back. Oh, which great. is what I'm about this to do. It's a continuous but cycle here. We're actually in a fitness competition ourselves, and he's been doing great. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely in better shape than me, but my trajectory is, like, going nicely, and my kids are getting older, so I'm sleeping now. Mm, big difference. <laughs> You're about to have a baby! Yes, <laughs> expecting a newborn, about to not sleep at all, so that'd be great. Um, Aunt Mary can come. But no, full Auntie circle. Mary? Crazy Aunt Mary. Crazy Aunt Mary. <laughs> That's the title I've adopted. <laughs> okay. What's a good compliment for you? And what's a good compliment for you? We'll get to the other the other question. But that's how I think I see people's values the fastest. It, like when you perform. So you did, you did a stand-up um, bit at the Martin Center for our big show and absolutely killed. Everyone was dying laughing. <laughs> you weren't there. I saw a video. He was literally getting applause breaks in the middle of his jokes. Like it wasn't Aww. even at the end. They were a very Am I good right? audience. It, it was, was awesome. It was a really Like he'd audience. start the impression and they'd just be like. Oh, that's <laughs> great. I said, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome though, because it was good. Yeah. It was um, great. But when you do something good, what's a good compliment? Because I think that'll align with your values. What? Ooh. So it, yours is probably not, oh Mary, you're so talented. Yeah, I don't like getting that one. Okay, so what's a good one? Um. Wow, I can tell you've worked really hard. <laughs> like, wow, that took so much dedication. That to me is like, oh, you noticed. It's so sweet. Cool. Yeah. It's like when someone compliments my cleaning. I'm like, thank you so much. You know. You compliment cleaning? Yeah. I never do this. I don't I'm know leaving. what love language that is, Ooh. but it's mine. It's not just money. Words of affirmation yeah. on acts of service. Yeah. She's <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> when your wives clean something well, I can talk to you. This is weird. <laughs> oh, dude. Whoa. You should say, wow, that looks really good. We're big really boys good. now. It, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's funny. I, um, Harley was, uh, she, the kitchen needed to be cleaned, and it was my fault. <laughs> I did say that this morning. <laughs> and I literally said, Emily, this house looks amazing. Thank you so much for cleaning. Did she melt? No, the cleaner came yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. I hate it. Oh, what great. What were you saying? Oh, I was just... So my wife hasn't seen The Dark Knight, but I still do Dark Knight impressions for her. So one day, <laughs> I love this. One, one day, the kitchen was just absolute wreck. She's, you know, it doesn't look very good. And it's my fault. I, I cook, I get in my creative zone, just tear the place apart and uh, need to be clean. And so my wife was, was, I think she's busy with something else. And then I just cleaned it up as fast as I could. Right, just wiped it up. Total Mary mode. Totally married <laughs> mode. I was like, I want. I wonder if I can get this done while she's. I don't know. Uh, she's in the bathroom or something. Yeah. And um, so she gets out. It's spotless. <laughs> I have like a towel and a spatula I've just dried, and I point to it. And in full Joker, I go, da da. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like a great time for you. She doesn't get the reference. She didn't get the reference. Yeah. I loved it. Story of my life. And um, <laughs> but then I told you, and you just cracked up. And so some things you do great. to tell later. It know? was great. But yeah, words of affirmation, acts of service, all that. Full so circle. here's a little behind the scenes thing that we have. A lot of teachers thought we were just wasting time on. We would get all of our students. We still do it, and we 
like track what what their personality is or our assessment of it we might be wrong and then what their love language is hmm. and so sweet it's i i think it's a difference maker in yeah. connecting with a kid and there are really cool ways to do it you can if people are gifts they don't need a big gift they just need you to be thoughtful and like i got this gift for you yeah. and if they're words of affirmation like nolan <laughs> then you're like, I, I believe in you. You can do anything. You are the man. You are awesome. And mm -hmm. throw those in there. And even if you're like physical touch, like throw out some high fives. Like that's a big thing. It's like, you are awesome today. A little fist bump. Bang. I am not. Bang. <laughs> Glove. Can I watch Do that? not touch. <laughs> yeah. Um, acts Compliment. of service. I don't know how that would work. Let me clean your violin for you. Yeah. Aw. Oh, see, is that better? Mm -hmm. Hey, you need some rosin? I got I'm actually quality clean... time, and that's perfect for music teaching. Yeah, that's already there. That's that's, like that, is, that is just that's a given. How many times a week do little kids get one-on-one -on -one interaction with an adult they trust? Ooh. That one-on-one -on -one bit is what is... It's pretty special. There's other cool adults in their lives. There's all sorts of good benefits from the big social things like school. But where you get, you're just like, this is your time. Mm -hmm. I need to reach out to more students that have gone and studied music and been like, this is this program. What should be in it? Mm. Well, if someone's wearing a, a Blair Elite t-shirt. Feel like they leave and you have your own lives and you're all busy and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Never talk to you again. Probably be. Just incentivizing competition. I just read that in um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a great book. Great book. I'm almost finished. I'm doing pretty well. Have Influence been, me. Have I been pretty friendly? I think, yeah, it's improved. Yeah, yeah. improved. I'm not so <laughs> boisterous. <laughs> I'm not as mean anymore. <laughs> you know, baby steps. Yeah. No, but um, one of the things there is just, if you want to influence people to different ideas, incentivize competition. It talks about a story in the book of a work manager trying to manage a mill. These guys are underperforming. They're under their sales goals, blah, blah, blah. And so the day shift comes in, and um, they just see a big six written on the floor. In chalk, and he's like, what is, not no, 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 and he's like, what, what, what does the six mean? And it was like the number of rotations the night shift had done before. Oh. And so they came in, they're like, oh, well, we can do better than that. So they erased at the end of the day, seven. The next day, the night shift, they come in, they're like, oh, seven, we got to beat that, 10. And then their productivity just goes up and up and up. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do when you incentivize competition. It's like they're no longer just in it for themselves, which is what you're great at. What does he gesture at you? Because, <laughs> because, no, no, because, no, because you're, I she didn't mean that. that. <laughs> I didn't mean that as an insult. You're really good at being in for things solely on the benefit that it will. Like the integrity of the, it will of the add, thing that exists. It will add to you. The Whereas me, it's element. like, well, why should I practice? It's just for me. But if I'm a competition with someone, I will practice my butt off. So you're good at self-motivation. I'm good at group motivation. There's two sides to that. So from the teacher perspective, like that'll help some people and then people will work harder than they've ever worked and they'll lose and they'll feel bad about themselves. Yeah. So there's that. So I hear the word competition, but I'm thinking more like recognition for a client. Yes. Yeah. And then say this yeah. is available and keep the integrity of it strong. So like right now, I've already told, like I'll kick you out of the advanced program. Mm -hmm. I'll be, and I tell the students, this is your commitment level and you can still study here, but you can't be in the advanced program if you don't make these commitments. And they actually like it. I was afraid they were going to be like, oh, Mr. Daniel. But they're like, I understand. I'm ready to take this seriously. Because it yeah. makes them feel like adults and capable. And they, they have some responsibility. But that's what happens in the real world. Like, dad's a doctor. He still has to take tests to maintain his license. And, right. like, if he fails, I mean, there's, there's grace there. But if he fails a certain number of times, he's out. And they're like, <clears throat> hear ye, hear ye. Oh, I forgot my gavel today. Ah, oh, That's probably a good thing. <laughs> I love my gavel. <laughs> Meeting come to order. <laughs> Dr. Naren. He told us before. They How many patients <laughs> survived? <laughs> you win. <laughs> yeah. This does go against current parenting uh, trends, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> no, you have to incentivize healthy, healthy competition between different groups of people in order to enhance productivity. And you can do that with just a t-shirt thing. It's like you get to wear this t-shirt and everyone knows what that means. You don't have to say it. I no, do like that. Like no one has and to brag about say, it. Because Mary wouldn't have you know bragged, I mean? but no. she would have worn it. I would have worn it. <laughs> and then if no one sees Mary in a Blair Advanced t-shirt, oh, I, I want to upgrade from this thing. Yeah, look, look at that piece of garbage. Look at this off-white brand. There's a store over it's, there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lovely t-shirt. Disney Channel? <laughs> it's great. Go get one. But uh, it's just... So we got our big TV up now. And what was suggested recently for the advanced was 
Like you make these commitments. You have to log 32 perfect practices. Perfect practices are where you do everything your teacher asks you and you wrote it down that you did it. Perfect. So, and you have to do 32 a semester, which is only two a week. We hope you'll do more, but you to stay in the program, you have to log those 32. Okay. And what we're gonna do is just, whenever you hit 32, we just like have your picture and your name and it'd be like, Mary Naren hit her semester goal. Whoa. And it'll go up on the TV. It's like the Hunger Games, but positive. <laughs> <laughs> the positive Hunger Games. I'd like to volunteer as tribute. <laughs> Can I please have a recognition? <laughs> That's cool. I like it. I think it'll be cool. But see, I would say the competition also needs to be against the person you were yesterday. So it's Which is still great. competition, but not yeah. against your peers who might cry. Aw. Mm. Make people cry. Yeah. I don't think so. See, I was the same way because I remember in the Suzuki program, I was a very, I was young and good. I got good quick. I wasn't like prodigy level, but I was doing like solid concertos at well, we found my Suzuki book the other day. Oh. So I was 10 when I was doing Bach Double. And I was playing it solidly, shifting well, nice vibrato, all that's that hard. Stuff. That's good. good. So, and I started at seven. So I got, I got there quick. And then, so like 10 to 13, I was like this little god because I was short as well. And then like everyone catches you later. Yeah. Right? We had a thing where it was, uh, the, the teacher had told me, if you don't learn this section, like I'm not gonna let you play. So you gotta do what's expected of you. Mm. And then we did a public audition. I'm certain I've told both of you this story because I taught you. And it was playing these little false, false harmonics. And it was like, you had to do this in front of your peers. Mm. And then I was a little weasel and was just <laughs> kind of like disrespectful in a lot of ways. But I was really insecure and I was the youngest one there. Yeah. Mm. So I went first, he was like, go, and I just, so nervous, but nailed it. Best that ever played it. And then that came with a wave of smugness. Right. And then like his little, what I felt like was his prized student, the one who everyone looked up to and was a senior and all that stuff, kind of botched a little bit and I just started snickering and couldn't stop. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I got a good, good talking to. Yeah. So that was a competition that was created and it did inspire me to improve my level. Overall, it didn't have a positive effect on the group. I guess, a more healthy way to do it is you have the Blair Elite, and these are individuals that have gone the furthest in the program, and then they aren't, I don't think they're going to be the type of people. So Elite's pre-professional, it's probably going to be 1%. Oh, okay. Advanced Blair. is going to be like, um, like if, if you graduate Elite, you're going to have your teaching certificate, you're going to finish level 10, you're going to have played all these crazy places, you're also going to have experience classically, ensemble, orchestra, and like studio time, learn how to do... You, you know, work your mix with in-ear monitors and, and different scenarios and close miking techniques and all that stuff. Hmm. That's gonna be, I'm not even gonna promote it because it's so hard to get into. I just want it to exist. So for the, for the couple people who are spectacular and their, their parents move to this area, as a lot of people do, they're like, this is what I've been waiting for and I thought it was only in giant cities. Mm. Now, are these high schoolers or young professionals or These what? will be high schoolers. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, if they decide to not go to college, they could get a job working. Like, right. Yeah. And they'll have all their RCM certification and stuff. I don't know. I'm thinking back to my weightlifting days. Everybody wanted that level one, level two weightlifting t-shirt. I do like that. I it do was, like that you can rank. It was like silent. The you didn't have to prove yourself. The guys were calm, you know. Cause Music's it, different a little bit, though, man, because... Perhaps. It's not like you benched it or you didn't. It's, it's like, you played this rep. I, you played it, technically, you played it. Yeah. You shouldn't have. <laughs> so, it's hard to we'll figure it out. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, you ready to see my journey? Yes. There so, I made this. Put it on the screen, Nolan. It's All gonna right. It's going to be awesome. You get an instrument. Okay. <gasps> Hooray. You start lessons at Blair Academy, Fort Hearts. Fort Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> that is what it looks like on your I know. <laughs> okay. Rocket, you're taking off. Difficulty, low. Progress, fast. Awareness, low. <laughs> Enthusiasm, hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> skills, low. <laughs> nice. And then, oh look, a challenge. I've always wanted to climb this mountain. I've done my first recital. Now it's festival time, whatever. Perfect. Wee! I'm going on a challenge, everybody. And then you hit a plateau. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Your teacher decided that now you will read music that is vertical and not <laughs> in portrait mode. Dang. The notes are a little smaller. I'm 
just a little discouraged, but if I can just get past this plateau, I will have made it. All the this person's dreams will come true. Okay. The pit of despair. I know it well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you think after the plateau you'll go up, but for some reason you might get stuck on something. You get rejected. Yeah, so the thing that makes the pit of despair so <laughs> despairing. That's so intense. I know. <laughs> it's, it's fire. I know. Oh my word. Here's why. Your awareness is now high. Oh. Now you know that you suck. That is You didn't a hard know that before. You thought you were awesome. Yeah. Yeesh. Yeah. Difficulty. Hi. Progress. Hello. Maybe not at all. <laughs> Awareness. Hi. Enthusiasm. Low. Skills. Medium. Yeah. So <laughs> you think they're low. Yeah. But the beginner thinks you're awesome. Yeah. And you don't know why, because you're just like, no, I, I stink at this. You just don't understand. So you trade out your rocket for this slug. Perfect. <laughs> and you begin uh, to what progress. Is that hole? That's the pit of despair. Oh, you're coming out of the hole. Oh, yeah, you'll see it. It's a checkpoint. Oh, I see. Now, people in the pit of despair, they say one of three things. Change teachers, change mm -hmm. instruments, or take a break. You guys change teachers. A lot of our students change instruments. Take a break means to quit nicely. Yeah. It's Did okay. we change teachers? You changed to me? I didn't start you. Oh. You reached some sort of plateau, and you felt like the grass was greener with me at some point. I just, I had or your mom thought it was more convenient to go to one place or something. Yeah. yeah. My schedule couldn't handle it anymore, so I took a different turn. And that's okay. But these are just the things you hear people here say. Right. Yeah. Then you have to progress slowly, and now you're building a foundation, but okay. you're not going to necessarily see results. In violin land, it's like learning vibrato. Yes. You want it so bad. Yeah. It's just like, you got to earn that one. And you do those little semi trill things. Yeah. Oh. Same person. Get a little, kind of a little spazzy vibrato. Oh, yeah. it sounded awful for like a year straight. You know what's funny? One of my favorite, most memorable moments teaching ever when a student just made me feel awesome was with you. Really? Yep. I had broken my pinky playing volleyball mm -hmm. and I never had the fourth finger vibrato that I wanted anyway because it was just really hard. But I was rehabbing and I was practicing like crazy. And then... I demonstrated a little section for you, and it just sounded really nice. And you were like, was that your pinky? Dang. Was there something <laughs> like that? I don't remember your exact words. And that and was I it. Cussed. But little did you know, i had been really discouraged for like a year about rehabbing my little pinkies. It was like clicking and stuff. Aww. And it was awesome. It was See, good. you never know who needs that word of affirmation. It's true. I'm Ooh. definitely an affirmation person. Quick, I should have emotional. known that you needed that, but I didn't. That's just. Well, if you know that I needed it, it would have taken away from the. That's true. Yeah, I think you were more just mad at your pinky at the time. Perhaps. <laughs> because you were now going to have to demonstrate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if I compliment him, then if I do it below that, it seems normal. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. How did you do that? I'll do my little best. But hey. You're on a slug. And this is where I think the advanced program will come in, because now you're going to have a path that's more structured. And it comes with a rocket. Okay. Ooh. Whee! Love it. You go up the mountain. Difficulty. Hi. Progress. Hello. Yeah. Some, your progress will feel fast, um, but I'm thinking that it's just the average of all this time. Mm. Um, the beginners now think you're like a god. They'll be like, oh, gosh, I wish I were a Mary Nearin. Well, of course she got in. Oh, whatever. And you had the people that you would say that to. And yes. Yeah. Um, awareness. Hi. Yeah, you're getting a lot more info. Pain from high. Yeah, yeah. Um, enthusiasm. Hi. You finally sound like a professional. Your vibrato came in. You're able to go get some gigs, whatever. And then skills high. And then you climb your little mountain and you make some friends. Aww. And that's then, the only point where you have friends? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need to work on this diagram. <laughs> It turns out that friends, friends were the always beginning. there. They were there all along. Yes. Okay, and then I don't know if I'm going to put this on our wall. Kind of for no reason at all, your <laughs> enthusiasm goes back down. Oh, okay. I Are you kind of projecting? I haven't figured that out. <laughs> Difficulty high. You've achieved all the things that this person wanted. Right. And you can play hard stuff, and your awareness is high, and your skills are high, but you'll feel like you're at that plateau again. Right. 
And this is where I personally believe you just need a cause bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. You either need to have another kind of mountain. So for you, it appears to be something like grad school. Yeah. And then that's what I needed. Kind of know what comes next, and that's a different challenge. Yeah, but sometimes the some plateaus. people it's teaching or having fun or whatever. Yeah, change of career. But sometimes all you need for the plateau is just time, and then in retrospect, you're like, oh, I wasn't plateaued. You know what I mean? It's just about daily disciplines, and sometimes you don't see the progress with daily disciplines. Which is why they're disciplines. That's a good point. Okay, so what are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Nolan, you had to develop, one, you saw what Mary did, you did a lot, and then you had to develop your, from my perspective, your impressions got like world-class overnight. Hmm. That's all I saw. <laughs> I saw you doing ones that were like, oh, I think he's trying to do Joker. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, how does his voice get so deep? It's just like having like that. That's probably not what happened. No. <laughs> no, I go back to the beginning of the diagram. Let's find the slug. It that's this is a progression of pretty much all kinds it's of It's all skill building, yeah. All achievements, really. I started slow. I was like, oh, I might have some talent here. Oh, I can make my voice sound like this guy. I you can make walk. someone laugh. Yeah, because I mean growing up in siblings, you have a big family, big arguments. I'd always mimic my sibling that I was having arguments with and bring a laugh and it was fun. Yeah. And so you have some achievement, and then you see someone way better, and then you get a plateau, and then you hit it, put it to spare, and you're like, well, I can't really do this after all. And so I was like, I knew at that point that I just needed to practice more, and that I still needed to just get some daily habits. So I would have goals, I'd be like, I will practice impressions for 30 minutes this week. I will spend five minutes like, for six days, and I will just focus in on trying one word like this person I want to try and sound like. Frankly. And that was it. Yeah. Frankly. That can, was, can we hear your frankly? Frankly? I can't. <laughs> okay. I can do this. You're so, uh, so close. Uh, so close. Uh, it's right here. It's very open right now and just needs to go back into a little bit of a rasp. A little bit of a rasp. No, no, no. Not not <laughs> quiet. Just still, still the <laughs> same volume, but it just goes back into your throat a little bit. Just, it's the same volume, but it's, this is forward. Yeah. This is forward. You bring the sound backwards into your throat. Okay. Sort of we can like, work on it later. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Nobody wants to see this. I thought it's we were going to do it. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I can do the <laughs> I can do that. Anyway, you hit plateaus. <laughs> you hit plateaus. Then you start climbing. You have achievements. You gain half a million followers. And you're like, it's all meaningless. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Gosh, but it's interesting. Jordan Peterson really helped me understand because he analyzes just everything from a psychological What does he sound like? Point of view. <laughs> Well, I, huh. I learned how to talk like him too, and he he speaks very plainly, and he uses big words like I can't think of any. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the difference. But no, he, he says from a from a clinical like perspective, <laughs> from a <laughs> no, Jordan, this is where I'd play the cadenza. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We'll just get that. But <laughs> no, it's it's that cliche. It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey and motivation. Happiness, contentment, they come from progression, not from a destination. You're never going to reach a point where it's like, oh, it's all good now. Thank you. Success is daily habits that make you feel fulfilled. I can't believe you name dropped the slide edge, though, because that book changed my life. Yeah. And then I felt like I've introduced it to a million of people mm -hmm. and I just didn't know if they ever thought about it again. It's mm -hmm. in the list for me. I have a long list. Yeah, yeah, I think I was like just teaching with you and you were introducing yeah, it to all the teachers. We did a tiny teachers. little book thing. Yeah, I still think about it. Even though I didn't finish it, I still think about it. No, it's, it's almost all books, especially like self-improvement ones or leadership ones. There's like one core concept you can get out of it. And it's usually in like the first two or three chapters. Don't waste your time. But you know what books Kinda changed my true. life right now? Really? What? That Sossman's House recommended? Yeah. The Inner Game of Tennis. Oh. You should read it. It's short. I have it, but I have not read it. Yeah, it's short and good. Is that impactful for all people or for you specifically? All people, any skill, but music specifically. Because my challenge right now is getting in my own way when I'm performing. Like, it's just a mental battle and it's all about that. Yeah. What is that? What's that like? So what is getting in? Are you aware at the time that you're getting in your own way or is it? Yes. This is a different type of plateau. So now yeah. that I'm in grad school, my plateau is awareness is super high. And so then I'm overthinking everything. I'm like, oh, that was terrible. You should do better. You know what this should sound like. And so while I'm performing, I'm not even in the music. I'm just thinking about all these technical do's and don'ts that I'm Is that probably... Mary imposed or is that professor imposed? Both. Okay. I mean, I've learned from my 
professors, but they would want. If me they to be let everything in. slide, the integrity, the coolness of being a CCM would yeah. be down. So like, that's not why I'm here. Yeah, it's supposed to be hard, but then you have to um, put that all away and actually like be in your performance, and that's what I'm struggling with. So, but the the book's really good. It's all about just um, your mind body connection and letting the body do things that it knows how to do without actually like stopping yourself with your overthinking. <laughs> It was really good for me. Do you overthink? So, yeah, just Do a you little, overthink? I think. Uh, oh yeah. I have a cool question for Depends you. Depends on what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Okay, question time. Question time. Nolan to Mary. Oh. I grew up with you. Uh oh. We grew up together. You grew up with me. You could say that. That's this what that has means. A confession coming. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I forgive you. We, <laughs> Mom and Dad got you a, a nice <laughs> piano. You got a nice piano. You practiced all the time. I would know your pieces enough to know when you messed up because of how much you practice. You would practice maybe two to four measures up. for hours it's at a time. You, tell me that. you would practice these small sections for just I hours. I teach you that. High expectations, instant forgiveness. Yep. Oh! I, oh I say that to myself in the practice rooms. Instant forgiveness. <laughs> Sorry, continue. I'm having a breakthrough. Should I be here? <laughs> <laughs> Actually. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh you heard me practice. Yeah, I would hurry you that. practice these small segments, tedious segments, for just hours at a time. Uh, it drove me crazy. <laughs> I, I knew it drove you crazy. Of course. What was the image that kept you going? Was it not wanting to disappoint your teacher? What was the final destination that, that kept you going in these daily habits? Uh, well, I mean, it's not just music. That's just anything. Like, you have to, you have to take it in small bites and then repeat and repeat. So I would say just... Uh, this is probably like having in my ears the end goal, like listening a lot to what you want it to sound like. And then um, if you just play it like you think you hear it, it's obviously not going to sound that way. So you got to take it apart. Do you have the end goal for that practice session or the end goal? End, end goal. Mm. And then you break it up into daily goals. Well, when I was trying to learn impressions, it was like, well, I want a million followers. I want people to love watching my videos. I want to give them a great time. It wasn't, I want to learn Donald Trump. So I imagine for you, oh. there must be a bigger oh, that's picture. What you mean. I'm the same way. I'm the exact same way. It, it's not about. I want yeah. to just be expressive. Yeah. Yeah. And I want people to enjoy that interaction. Yeah. I don't care what it is. Some yeah. Extra musical. Goal. It's just a vehicle. That the yeah. two measures. And just a I'm vehicle. just grateful that mom put me in a position that I can, I can leverage that exponentially with a violin. Yeah. But it's the same. So like, I'm thinking of this as a progression. Like is that you not did, you, Mary? I think this is why I chose collaborative piano. I realized that I want to help people. That's my end goal. Oh. And collaborative piano is my vehicle to do that. You want to help love people. performers? Yeah, any wanna... musicians. Yeah. So you got, uh, that's pretty, it's pretty, pretty deep. Awesome. I got there. Okay. But at the time, it was mainly to make my teacher happy and also to see personal growth. Can and we, to realize my own goals, no matter what they were. Can I sort of build a, a framework of progression for your mind? So it was two measures to gain that section, to gain that song, to gain that skill, to then after that it's be a good student. Yeah. After that it's be a good teacher. Yeah. And my life philosophy is whatever I'm doing, I want to do it well. I, you know, Colossians 323. <laughs> but, what is um, that? Nice plug. You know, doing everything for the glory of God and not for man. So I feel like if you do something with excellence, it is more glorifying than if you just throw it together. I have that phrase in the non-biblical sense. It's the how I do anything is how I do everything. Yes. Mm. But then I, I've actually given that up. So that's what Oh. I don't know. I had, to change, I had to change some pillars of my life to get to the next level. Yeah. You got to prioritize. Yeah. Because the scale of things, it's like if you want to go deep on one thing, you can't give your full attention to everything. You got to start cutting some stuff out. Yeah. Which is another tough pill to swallow. So yeah, those are my motivations. That's interesting. I always thought you just wanted to follow the rules. I also like rules. What was it like to have a, a nice piano in your house? You did not always have that. It was, I think, a game changer because it made it more fun to play. It made me um, practice my tone differently, which I'm still on a journey, a tone journey. But um, you know, when you're playing an upright, you're all you're thinking about the notes and you're thinking yeah. about like loud, soft. When you get a grand piano. There's a lot, a lot of layers in there you can explore. So I think it took my musicality up for sure. Yep. All right, popular composer you think is overrated. Think for five seconds. Beethoven. I think he was. Oh, he that was, was mine. He was faking being blind for more attention. It's deaf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. He thinking, was deaf. Thinking of Were you going to say Beethoven? I was going to say no, Beethoven. Mary. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I don't know enough to play this game. Okay, I'm just, just saying. Like, you also gonna say Beethoven? Yeah. Why? Because how many Beethoven melodies have made me cry? Not many. 
it's not like Brahms, you know? And also, I just feel like Brahms once you've played one Beethoven sonata, you think Brahms is underrated? Underrated. I think so, too. He's becoming one of my faves. Because he's made me cry. If you make me cry, <laughs> in a good way. But Beethoven, it's like, he's a little predictable like at this point. Cry. <laughs> not with my music. Yeah. <laughs> You're terrible. <laughs> it's like, oh, stormy crescendo. <gasps> Subito piano. It's like once you've done it once, you've done them all. Mm. Sorry, guys. I don't think you I mean, cry. the Wallstein's incredible, but... I just have to say, you might Why be a little. Do we have like a deep conversation? Sorry, right, we're just. Um, I'm still talking though. <laughs> yeah, Beethoven, Beethoven again. No, I just said that. I don't know enough to play this game. I don't know composers that well. That's fair. I love the Swan. That's like my favorite classical piece right <laughs> like now. Saison. 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 This one. Saison. This one. It is beautiful. To me. I love that. That'll it's be your answer beautiful. to the next question. Uh, I think Mozart's a little overrated. See, I was debating Mozart or Beethoven. I think genius, but I don't know why he's the top three. Right. Also, Absolute genius, because the body of work. Mozart's awesome. Yeah. I love Mozart. I just think he's overrated. Didn't yeah. he die like in a weird, silly way? Yeah, he was, lived a horrible life, but he was super talented. And then even though Bach is super famous, he's somehow still underrated. I just don't even... He'll never be rated highly enough. Bach. Just... Bach. So... Okay, underrated composer that is that is kind of in your standard if you take music history you'll hear about him not like your friend who's a genius okay Tchaikovsky mm. okay he has a bunch of fun melodies that are just really intuitive I don't think he's underrated though how often do you hear it people are just afraid to spell his name if you're a ballerina you hear it every day <laughs> definitely they're afraid to spell his name that is true today we're learning about <laughs> <laughs> I would say Poulenc or Prokofiev. Mm. Poulenc? I'm not really familiar with it. I cannot give you a single Poulenc piece. Exactly. What they're known for. Oh, underrated. Underrated, but beautiful. You got that. Okay. Because it combines a lot of things that I like. Yeah. I already said it earlier. I think it's Brahms. Uh, there is a close family member of mine who was like, why did you name one of your rooms after Brahms? He wrote like a lullaby. And I was like, you take it back. Take it back. Brahms is so dramatic. It just speaks to my soul. Yeah. And all those kind of violin, concerto writing, romantic composers, that's just where my heart and soul is, and I'm mm -hmm. not ashamed to say it. I think string players could stand to listen to Rachmaninoff's orchestral scores more, because if you like the beautiful melodies, I think they're in there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, all the pianists have that in their mm -hmm. past somewhere. Oh, he's good. Brahms is hard to play, though. He's difficult. A little weasel. Especially the chamber music. Yeah, really you're so good. right. We played two Brahms, and they, they surprised me how hard they were. Yeah, you don't think they're that hard. No, they are. Mm -hmm. Crazy chords and crazy counting. And they're hard for everyone. I think yes. they're the easiest for cello. Piano and violin, crazy hard. Cello wasn't as bad. But then Mendelssohn was like, get ready, cello. Yeah. <laughs> and then violin, not so bad. I'm playing the third piano quartet on my next recital at CCM. Do you get to play a lot of... Chamber. So break break down how you spend your time as a the only collaborative piano majors I really knew were almost indecision. I don't want to do music ed. Music performance looks like a lot of extra performing, and they kind of found a home. Yeah. But you have like a more specific goal. Like I really like that this yeah. category exists. I decided it was for me. Um, day to day, I am in a lot of lessons for other people, you know, and rehearsals. So I do a lot of rehearsing. A lot of coaching slash so teaching. At the high level, audience, at a very high level, you uh, like all the big teachers have staff accompanists or collaborative pianists always. It's super helpful. It's mm -hmm. awesome. It's amazing. Um, yeah. So I get to go to their deal. lessons. So I get to learn a lot of different things because, you know, it's about somebody else, but I just get to listen and then play when I'm needed. So it's really fun. Do you like kind of take notes there ever? Uh, I have on my iPad since I'm using an iPad to read music. So if you're doing a master class or you're working with a student, you probably have all these little tiny bite-sized nuggets that you can little like throw out. Of wisdom, which makes you a good coach as a collaborative pianist because yeah. you're just like absorbing all this information. They ask years. good questions. What do the great teachers do? The ones that get the results, uh, let's say you're polishing a piece. They've, mm -hmm. they've, they've already learned it and they're like getting ready for a performance or competition. Mm -hmm. What is special about like conservatory level? Mm. 
instructors? Are they asking good questions? Do they just have deeper knowledge of the music? Are they performing at that level? Do they demonstrate a lot more mm. or less? I think they might demonstrate less, actually. A lot of it that I found, which is frustrating but good for you, is open-ended. It's like, you need to do this yourself, so I'm just gonna like guide you there. And I think it might be a grad school thing, actually. But um, they just inspire creativity with their, you know, the things that they say. And they also, the great teachers are the ones that adapt to each student. I've noticed that. People say that. Everyone says that. Yeah. How do you see that in practice? Well, What's there are a good some sign teachers. That they're doing that? If you can predict as the pianist what they're going to say every time, then they're probably predictable. <laughs> and, okay. like, and they're still good, and that works for some people. But like, or if every student out of their studio sounds the same, which is, you know, not a bad thing. Yeah. To me, it stands out when somebody's like, oh, how would I change my lesson approach for this student? Or how would I pull this out of someone else? So I've seen teachers like really high energy for one student and then really, really calm and collected for another student. Like, it's really cool like to that. see. Yeah. Could just be the teacher having a coffee or not having Could coffee. Be. Maybe they're having a rough day, but mm. I was like, interesting approach. What are some teaching moments? Maybe they're with me, maybe not, that really stuck out to you for your whole life. Just one or two things. It's like, man, I really I remembered that. Mm. And if you have one first, you can go, Mary. Could be recent or in the past, as a baby. Mm. Hmm. I got one. Okay. Yeah. I was working the E major partita for my unaccompanied Bach, and I heard a kid in the old uh, practice room of intimidation at a big honors orchestra I was at, and he was uh, playing it at, like double my tempo, and it seemed flawless. And then uh, Mark Zalmanovich at the time was the head honcho there, and this kid plays, everyone's in awe of him, and he just stopped him. He's like, you play like robot <laughs> and that just stuck in my head in this big like Russian accent yeah and in my brain I was like don't do that don't impress the people like spend your time to impress the people that know what they're talking about yeah instead of just crazy speed yeah so you play like robot that'll get you yeah it was brutal that kid was sad because he obviously worked very hard yeah to do that well, that reminds me of a teaching moment with you, actually, not to just, you know, be a flatterer here. But I remember I was playing the Romanian folk dances, Bartok, with you, and I was stressed about my techniques. I felt inferior, and I couldn't play them like I wanted to. But then one day, it was the first one, I just kind of let go and pretended like, you know, I knew what I was doing, and I just, like, really started scrubbing at it. Yeah. And you got so excited. I'd never seen you that excited before, and I was like, oh, like, it doesn't you have to be perfect to be fun. And then... It was just really inspiring. You and Anna were both, I think I remember this correctly, very timid, and it, and me and possibly Lily or, or Sarah uh, were, were very hard on the instrument, and we had to learn how to be calm. Mary's not timid in lessons. The underrated Mary quality is that she would, you would, um, you'd like answer questions and you'd give stuff a go, even if you were insecure about it. You'd be like, okay, I don't know about this, but I'll give it a try, which okay. is very, very handy. I remember With one teaching... Tip. Cool. I just say growth mindset. Growth, oh, mindset. growth mindset. What do you got? What sticks out? Um, so with you, it was just kind of less of the teaching stuff, just uh, the relationship we had. It was really, it was really cool. Cause it's like, like there's this card trick. You, you were more than a violin teacher. You sparked my creativity and you gave me a way to express it. As far as teaching moments, moments ago, I remember at Bob Jones, you saw this at a camp. I think I was playing that Gavat in G. Uh, da 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 da. And uh, the remote. Yeah, yeah. D. And we were at the camp, and there was <laughs> a special teacher that was there, and he had me play it. I volunteered to play in front of the orchestra. Hmm. At, it's like a public <gasps> I lesson. Do you remember that? And oh, I was so awesome. tense. I was so nervous. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, he just complimented me. He's like, man, you really know this piece. This is fantastic. Uh, one thing I would I would encourage you. He talked through like I was very tense. I was very nervous, and I rushed it. He was like, I want you to relax, play it again. And he did, and he was like, okay. and I played it again. And uh, a little better, and he was like, okay, now I want you to stand on this chair and do it. And so he had me stand up on this chair, and because um, I, I would walk around, and I was just really fidgety, and the yeah. chair was like, well, I can't do that or I'll fall. Yeah. And so it actually helped me play more relaxed. Mm. And it didn't perfect it, but <laughs> it definitely got me on the right on the right track, and I started to play a little bit more. I'm gonna use that. Um, 
It was really cool. It was just like, yeah. I would I would kind of fidget around while I was playing. I was like super like, just kind of tense. Inward. And uh, that sort of opened me up a little bit. We now come to one of my very favorite games, which is pitching each other's, sometimes we do instruments, but since we all play pretty much the same instruments, yeah. we're gonna go with our professions and our career tracks. So I'm gonna be the business owner in the arts. Mary is gonna be the um, advanced classical musician at the conservatory. And Nolan is gonna be the voice actor and social media influencer. I get Mary, Mary gets you, you get me. Okay. Okay, we got this. One, two, three. Yeah. Who's going first? <clears throat> you. You. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. All right, Mary. I don't play these games. Woo. 30 seconds. Hype me up. To pitch my brother's job. 30 seconds to pitch the career track. Why is it rewarding? What can you What can you okay. learn? Who can you become right. by following in the path of your brother, but the infamous Nolan do. Aaron? Yeah, let's do a little deep. She's got to guess. Okay. She's got to guess. Okay. It's hilarious to have a vocalist like pitching the violin and okay. why they should study that instrument. It's really funny. And he can correct me afterwards if I'm wrong, right? Like, well, oh, yeah, yeah. Then we'll debrief, like, wh okay. why do we do it? Perfect. You ready? Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Aaron. If you are a certified goofball and you think, how can I turn this into a career? Look no further <laughs> than my brother, who just goofs off all day and calls it a day. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's it's my boss. 17 seconds. <laughs> so what he can do is use his creative genius, his musical training, his business classes in college, and turn it into this happy uh, combination of skills that he uses to benefit local businesses and, um, and reach a large audience that's not just local. Because he does social media. It's <laughs> awesome. Okay. Nolan, you ready to pitch being a business owner um, in the arts? Uh, yes. Here we go. If you're a highly competitive person and you think you can add value to someone through a product or service of your own making or something you can just do better than someone else, you should look into business ownership. Business ownership has high rewards and high risks. You're in charge of everything. You're in charge of your retirement. You're in charge of how you conduct your business. You're in charge of who you conduct business to. You're in charge of everything. That comes with a lot of responsibility. It comes with a lot of reward if you're able to do it right. If you're competitive, if you're type A, if you know how to serve people, you should look into that. Well, I'm convinced. Wow. That was solid, man. This has got business major over here. Yeah. Bang. All right, I'm ready. With technology, the industrial revolution, the AI revolution, there are some art forms that are going to go on forever. And they've been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. And we need people to carry those on. If you're one of those people who want to see what you're capable of as a representation of humanity and you like... Uh, a challenge and you like to be surrounded by people who have chosen to do something very, very difficult that's not for the faint of heart, you should pick an art form like the piano. You should see what is possible for you and what others have done and see if you can contribute to something um, that characterizes, that sets apart kind of the, the human race that, that goes across languages and nationalities and ages and genders and you can contribute to that, you can gain a lot, and you can give a lot um, by studying the piano at the highest level on earth. I am emotional. That was beautiful. I didn't hit start. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> that I felt was like that was longer, though. Because if I had Sweet. five more seconds, this would have been gold. <laughs> oh, man. This is so good. All right. Switch it once. Let's do it oh, again. Gosh. I got okay. Nolan. Nolan gets Mary. Mary gets me. Okay. You ready? Okay. Oh, well, nose goes. Uh, yet again. <laughs> Please, guys. <laughs> All right, Mary. The peripheral. Why should you own a music academy? Mm. 30 seconds. And go. Have you ever seen a need in your community and thought, man, Shum wants a shump, shump, shump. <laughs> Someone should do something about this. Well, look no further than being a business owner. I obviously have the same pattern here. <laughs> you can make all these creative decisions using your own experience and using your passion for serving others and create a business that you are truly passionate about and can influence the community based on your own personal values and convictions. <sighs> it's there. You got it. Good job, man. Thank you. I had to this go is first really stressful time. for me. That was hard. Because right. this like, is so yeah. opposite. Okay, got you. People don't know what you do for them. 
People don't know um, or even care much about you or your life. They care about themselves. They care about how you make them feel. So a wonderful way to set yourself apart is to make people feel good. And through comedy, you can do that um, from the front of a house in an auditorium. But only through social media can someone from a small town with great skills expand that reach globally. Not only build a name for yourself, but in, in mass give people what they're looking for. When they're endlessly scrolling, they're gonna find bad content, good content, wholesome content, disgusting content. And we need um, talented, but also uh, people with scruples to be making high quality content and teaching kids that you can develop skills that even though they might seem weird to you or to your family, there are other people out there across the world that just that think that the niche that you are doing is, is hilarious and provides value to them. And it's awesome you get paid for that. Are you sure you didn't start that again? I think I did again. Gosh. <laughs> this is oh boy. completely unfair. <laughs> All right. Nolan, I'm ready. <clears throat> go. I'm only talking to a certain few people. <laughs> Here we go. You've been a student. You know what it's like to be a good student. You know what it's like to be a bad student. You know what it's like to have a good teacher and a bad teacher. And you want to be a good teacher. You know what it's like to have one of those. And so how do you do that? Well, you need to build a name for yourself. And how are you going to do that? You need some credibility. So what should you do? You should advance at one level at the highest rate possible. You should establish the most credibility in the area you want to go to. If you want to teach the piano, you should do what Mary did. You should go and you should study that to the broadest extent, to the most important credentialized place on earth, grad school, and then become <laughs> a certified teacher. That's how you can become uh, what the kids call a certified boss. That is my job description. That's awesome. <laughs> Why does this keep stopping? You just keep locking it. I did start it. You saw me. I is did it just see that it goes you. to sleep? Did I, it should I still go off. I've had more time. Don't use those for planks, that's for sure. All right. <laughs> Come on! Oh <laughs> it's only for 30 seconds. 115 uh, seconds. <laughs> is it a Kago box? Yes! <laughs> that's exactly what it is. I knew you would get it. Uh, it's from my standard routine. Yeah. Oh. You had to be there. <laughs> oh, the light's happening again. Busy. All right. Mental happening. note, get that looked into. All right, Nolan, what did you like about what we both said? And what did what? we leave out that drives you to be you, you do your impressions? Uh, well, I do a lot of things. It's not just social media influencing. That's the least of what I do. I'm in media creation. I'm also in business myself, doing some marketing for some exclusive brands. I run an online retail store um, that you can only purchase through the web. But it is all connected through presenting yourself to other people, through making them care about what you have to offer. And it's all centered around the idea of me adding value to you, not you adding value to me. Um, and I think if I do that right, if I harness that ability of influencing people, of winning friends and influencing people, the book I'm reading. Callback. If, I can, if I can master that, I lost my train of thought. But <laughs> if I can master that. Wealth can, and riches. If I can master I can, Both. that ability of winning friends and influencing people to enhance their own lives by enhancing the lives of other people, I can master the idea of it being more blessed to give than to receive. Whoa. Has to right. noted. <laughs> Mary, what did you like? Did, did we get anywhere close to why you're doing what you're doing or no? I love what you said. That oh, sweet. actually, it was great because um, sometimes when you're in a conservatory environment, you're like, why am I doing this? This is really hard. And you, you know, you really struck a tender chord. <laughs> because, <laughs> you're doing it because it's hard. Yeah, you're doing it because it's hard. And also, I remember um, before I went to college, my my teacher, my future piano teacher was drawing this Venn diagram and he was like, you need to do what you're good at, what you love, but also what the world needs. And I feel like I'm trying to lean into that point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I feel like as a pianist, I can use my skills that I've built up through years at Blair Academy Ooh. to actually give other musicians what they need and the support that they need. So yeah, I would just add that to your to your definitions. And you know what it's like to be a personal teacher, one that you can go yeah. to in times of need, not just for sections of music you're struggling with, but with life you're struggling with. And yes. so maybe you want to combine mentorship, skill, yeah. and credibility to yeah. become I a really good like influence the credibility line. I, I felt myself going, I wish I had thought of that. Yeah. Because that'll open doors to reach people you couldn't have reached without it, because they'll, right. they'll listen to you because you've Proven. Yeah, great. and that's not a good truth. That's an unfortunate truth that people only listen to 
people with paper, people with something written on a piece of paper that said they did something. (laughs) Yeah, but for me, the paper is essential because that's like the conservatory is where all the good musicians are. So I feel these are the rules of the game. Take advantage of them. Yeah. Um. So I'm a business owner in the arts because I didn't see a path that already existed that had exactly what I wanted. And I was trying to get there. Big thing that you guys didn't say, but it's the most, to me, the purest part about being an entrepreneur is creating jobs for others. So there's people with skills that don't have the capacity for risk, or they don't know how to go get clients, or they don't have a career advancement path, but they are awesome people with awesome skills. And if you create that little fertile soil, they will do crazy things that I could never, ever do. So I have a passion for helping kids with theory. I suck at theory. I mean, most of them, I was just so performance based. I performed a million times. I feel so comfortable on a stage. My theory is relatively weak to that. But our school can create that by me providing a place for others. So I really think employing other people is very important to me. Mm-hmm. I did leave that out. And that is one of the biggest things you've done. Just for me, like all the life changes I had, having to switch to school online and I have three part-time jobs. This is my favorite with you. You finish school, man. We knock it out of the park. We're going full-time. Full-time, baby. Media creation. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Lastly, before we close out, we should talk about our videos we did together since that was the start of my career. Okay. We all have been in videos together that we made for fun that got a significant amount of recognition. And I know why I made those videos. Video number one was the first time I went viral. This was Orchestra Stereotypes. And I know why I made it with Nolan. And then I know how I felt when it went big. And then the second one, well, it wasn't the second one, but the one I did with Mary was a much more thought out thing that we carefully planned and carefully selected who was in it. And that was our two practice commercial, the fictional pharmaceutical aid for how you can get better at music. All you need is to practice. Yeah, so Nolan, <clears throat> what was it like when I asked you to do this, or did you ask? How did you feel when we were filming? Did it feel like a big deal or not? And then how did you feel when it blew up? Oh boy. All right, how did I feel when Daniel asked me to do the video? I was ecstatic, because Daniel was always a super cool dude to me. He was like the big brother I never had. He was doing all this neat stuff that I wanted to do one day, and he asked me to be a part of it. Are you kidding me? And he didn't have to pay me. Um, he didn't have to, he gave yeah. <laughs> and he didn't. <laughs> he did not, he didn't have to, because I loved it. I saw the value in it. Um, I knew he had great ideas. I wanted to be a part of it. I knew I could contribute as well, and I did. We had a great time together. The comments section in that YouTube video is fantastic. Every, everyone knows that we had a good time doing that. That's one of the reasons it took off, in my estimation. Seeing it take off, I wasn't surprised. I loved doing that. Anytime I love doing something, I don't care how much recognition it gets. It's nice, it's a great add-on, but anytime you love doing what you do, you don't really care about the results because you know you're doing the right process and the results come. Uh, So that was awesome. It was a yay, but it wasn't like that made it or break or broke it. It was was a great experience throughout. Was there a part of the question I missed? No, that was it. Nope. So my perspective of that video is I thought I had good creative ideas, and Nolan was just ripe for, I wanna be a part of something, and I wanna do something funny. And I really phoned it in. I was like, I gotta let this kid do something. He's like, he needs to do it. And I felt like I was kinda doing him a favor Mm -hmm. at the time, because he was just excited. And I'm like, I can't waste this excitement. So let's, I gotta think of something. And I put no effort into it. I had a little, like one little shop light. I put us just like kind of against the wall. I didn't frame us. I didn't light us. I didn't have good mics. Right over there. It was just like, let's hit record. And then we couldn't stop laughing because we started writing out these ideas. And I just thought it was hilarious. And I totally agree. I did not care if it got, nor did I think it would go big. Because that wasn't the point. No. The point was to let Nolan participate in something from start to finish that was enjoyable. It's kind of plant a little flag. And then I I did go nuts when it blew up because that was the first time you're going, people think I'm funny. Like a lot of people think I'm funny. 
And I looked down and I remember it was like, it got to like 10,000 views. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> and I called my wife. Uh, I was headed home, I was done teaching that day. And I was like, that little video Nolan and I did has like 10,000 views. And she's like, dude, that's awesome. I drove home, took 15 minutes. I looked at it, it had 250,000 views. Wow. And I was like, oh, like this is special. Like that's awesome. It and then nice. it was just like refresh, 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 refresh. Yes. And it like, it went crazy. And then Classic FM picked it up and it was, that was awesome. Then I developed a relationship with some of the Classic FM editors and they were like, your content's great. Can you make more stuff for us? Mm -hmm. And then I went into sound effects and bowing into practice. And it was like, they oh, wow. already had the audience that were looking for stuff. Wow. So it kickstarted. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. I didn't, I didn't know if other people thought I was funny. Oh yeah. I do remember that. I just loved hanging out with you, man. But I, now that you mentioned that, I do remember, I had a lot of doubts. I still do. It's like, do I have anything to offer to people? I really want to want to have that, but you never know. And sometimes that result is what you need to realize you have something to add. It's pretty crazy. I don't even remember how I pitched it to you, but I, I was pretty sure it was going to be a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a staff meeting. You were like, here's my idea. And I was dying laughing. So I was like, oh, you want me? So you, you saw it before we filmed it. Like you, you yeah. saw that it could be funny. You were talking through it on the whiteboard and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Most people, they don't get it until after we've done it. Then they're like, I see what you. I knew do. the vision. But I didn't, know, I didn't know it'd be that good of quality. Like it was really a good video. Yeah. It's solid. I worked really hard on that. It one. was awesome. <laughs> so, and then we filmed it, which was actually. Filming things is usually a little underwhelming, but yeah. what was it like for you? Were you nervous? Was it? I was pretty nervous, but I was also really excited because a secret um, hobby of mine is acting. I actually really like to act. So it was like making my dreams come true. So I was really excited. But I was, um, you know, I felt awkward. Cameras are awkward. Yeah. But it turned out fine. It does feel kind of weird, this black circle staring at you. Yeah. Little robot eyeball. Begging for attention. Yes, yes. <laughs> It doesn't blink. You were playing that little Oceans etude that I, I did. love. Oh, that looks so <laughs> smooth. Well, I was missing a lot of notes, but the, he was like, don't worry, the sound's not going to be on. That's I how like, I play it. You, you're, you're the only one that got um, positive comments in there. Really? I don't know. Have you guys made the mistake of going comment diving? Uh, I have, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Mm. What were my positive comments? They were, the, a bunch of people were saying, it was like, obviously the pianist is phenomenal. <gasps> they could have at least gotten a violinist that <laughs> pretended to know what they were doing. And you're the teacher. <laughs> I know. Well, well to be fair, teacher. you were just kind of like goofing off. Is that what you think? Oh, at the no. very end? Yeah. When you're just like staring at the camera with the yeah. smoke? Were you not just goofing off? No! <laughs> I was playing Paganini, it just slowed it down. I was oh. making a silly face. It was the goofy face for me. Mm -hmm. That must have been... It was the dun chen dun chen dun chen dun chen dun You couldn't... You... I'm sorry I misjudged you. Uh, it's okay. It's all good. I didn't know any of that. But you know what was cool was it started to blow up on Facebook, not as much on YouTube. No, but no, on that Facebook, one didn't do good on YouTube. Yeah, we got like a million views. And so people at my music school would look at me twice and be like, are you the girl in two practice? And I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And then Giving my professor. you some street cred. Yeah. My professor that I got to like um, co-teach his class, it wasn't quite a TA, it was like a peer mentor situation. He would play it every year and be like, we have the star right here. And I'd be like, guys, stop. It was so fun. That's what you need. Because when you do something cool, you need other people to celebrate it. So yeah. you don't have to go toot your own horn everywhere. But it's like a subtle flex because my name's yeah. not anywhere. It's just my face. I was a freshman in college. So hopefully it stays similar enough. <laughs> we'll see. That's funny. We're going to do more great. of those. I'm rocks. excited. Yeah, That's I knew two practice would be good. Um, I think it's got another hit coming. I think um, it's going to get you know, get an, get another wave because it's so applicable. Reshared, yeah. It's pretty funny. It's pretty brilliant. We had a kid apply to colleges and on the college application website, they had that video like embedded. No way. Yeah. Wow. And it was wow. like, they messaged like, I'm from that school that made that. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah, that's pretty we'll crazy. Look at a second look. Go look it up. Mm -hmm. Go look it up. It's pretty funny. Hmm. Two practice. All right. <clears throat> We're going to wrap this up. This has been amazing. Hanging out with two of my favorite Former students and that? current colleague. Real quick, two. Real quick advice for students, okay? I will do intermediate students, you do beginning students, you do advanced music students. Okay. Little word of advice for someone in that stage of learning music. Okay. To the beginning student, what would you say? To the beginning student, you're considering developing a new skill. You're weighing the pros and cons, the time it'll take, 
I would just say to dive on in, especially if it's with music, you will never regret knowing how to play an instrument. You're never going to be like, oh, I wish I didn't know how to play the piano. I wish I didn't know how to play the violin. At parties, you're going to be able to play something and other people are going to be like, I wish I learned how to do that. And it's not about that. Like, you don't want to cause envy. It is for me. <laughs> I'm a total party pianist. My goal is to make people like Mary upset. Yeah. That's what I do with violin, so it's really yeah. cool. It's awesome, right? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you can have a lot of fun. It's going to expand your horizons of creativity, of, of discipline. And you can have a lot of great time with it. A lot of great time. So you can the key have a lot is of... you're not going to regret the time you're going to spend. Right. No regrets. You get that there. It's going to be hard, but you're it's going to be worth it. All hard things are worth it. To the intermediate student, you will regret if you quit now. I promise you'll regret if you quit now. Unless you find something else that just lights your little soul on fire. But I worry that you would go there and quit at the intermediate stage of that endeavor as well. So if you actually believe you won't regret learning music, you have to get enough that you get over that hump to where you are seen as a musician. So that means not sounding like an amateur. So to the intermediate student, to avoid those regrets, slow down and be patient. Because sometimes you might think you sound like a professional or that you can shift or that you can widen that vibrato, but you need to really focus on developing skills. Skills and technique, go slow, be patient. That's my advice to the intermediate student. Hmm. It's, it's the most boring right there, I think. It is pretty boring. To the advanced student. Um, beware, and this is going to be really profound, I think I heard this somewhere else, like a liturgy or something. Beware of the twin traps of pride and shame. <laughs> twin towers of pride and shame. It's like, you're probably going to be fluctuating between the two of those all the time. You're going to think you're awesome, you're going to think you're the worst, and it's going to maybe go back and forth every other day. But practice like you're the worst, <laughs> and perform like you're the best, and that's... That's the balance that I, think I we like. Need to find. That I've never heard that. Mm. Really? Yeah. I think that's a cliche. Prideful in defeat, humble in victory. I love it. Yeah. Well, because music is super, super um, exposed, and you're constantly being evaluated for your skills and how you stack up against others. Don't let it get to your head. Either way, don't feel too good about it or too bad about it. Just do your thing. Daily disciplines. Um, yeah. And you just got to put on that persona when you're performing, but it doesn't actually mean that you have to think that highly of yourself all the time. So yeah. This has been Blair on the Air, the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to my special guest, Mary Naren, everybody. Nolan Naren, the great and powerful. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs> it is my honor to say that is a wrap. It's a wrap, everybody.